Welcome to Holy Cross Online for worship here today. It is good to be together. Uh, a few things as we get started. I'm Pastor Adam. With me today is Pastor Brian as well to help bring the message to you. Uh, and uh, as we walk together as believers in Jesus Christ who want to know him and make him known, uh, there's things that we do together uh, in the in-between, not in, just in the worship services, so that we can uh, know him more and make him known uh, throughout our community. Uh, and a few things that I want you to be aware of in that, with that in mind, uh, are these. Uh, number one, the stewardship campaign is coming up. It's called Open Handed. And man, it's really a time where in the course of November here, we're going to be praying this prayer that God would shape us and mold us to be increasingly open handed in how we live. Because that's what it means to live in Christ's in Christ's kingdom, giving freely as we've freely received. I want you to know about that because you can be looking in your mail uh, and expect to see a couple letters coming along the way and some more details about all of that. And know that Commitment Sunday is coming November 22nd. So for all of you who call Holy Cross home, this is an opportunity for us to, like a family together, uh, commit to what's coming and uh, speak of what resources we have and that God has positioned us to commit to the work that he has for us to do here in Jenison, Michigan, uh, as uh, the family of Holy Cross. Number two, November 7th is a yard cleanup uh, here at Holy Cross. So it's a time to uh, bring your rakes, bring your gloves, bring those leaf blowers along, and we'll uh, get the grounds all cleaned up as we uh, get to the end of the year and before the snow comes. Uh, so November 7th is when we'll be doing that in the morning. Take a look at the Friday email for details about that. Um, rain date for that is the 14th if for some reason we need that. Uh, last is that we have the flood buckets, the Lutheran early response team flood buckets and hygiene kits that uh, still have a few more weeks that you can pick those up or you can make a donation to uh, support uh, filling one of those. And uh, you have until November 15th to complete that. So if you'd like some more information, feel free to call the church office or check the Friday emails. Uh, it's a way for us to work together to equip other believers in Jesus Christ to share the love of Jesus Christ to people that are in a time of crisis when a natural disaster comes along and these sorts of kits would be put to good use. So uh, those are ways that we get to live uh, on mission here, uh, but just as much a part of that mission is that we would gather, that we would gather around God's word, and that we would treasure his promises. So join me in prayer as we move our hearts toward that today. Almighty and everlasting God, you knit together your faithful people of all times and all places into one holy communion, the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that together with all of them, we may come to the unspeakable joys you have prepared for those who love you. Lord, we pray this all through Jesus Christ, our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, we agree and say together, Amen. Now let's sing together of the great things that our God has done and will do for us.
just sang about stepping into freedom. But for so many of us, we don't feel free. We feel burdened, shackled to our own selfish choices, by our own selfish thoughts, by our carnal flesh. We don't feel free. We feel enslaved. But God does want to set us free. So let us come to him in repentance as we confess our sin together. Join me. Good and merciful King, we long to be free of our sin. We long to be free from our selfishness. We long for the freedom you give. Empty us of ourselves and fill us with you. We ask this in the merciful name of Jesus. Amen. Now take a quiet moment here to ponder the particular areas where you long to be free of those sinful things that hold you back. Father, we do lay all those things before you. Our Heavenly Father, our Heavenly King is merciful. He provides freedom through his son Jesus, liberating our souls to freedom. So brothers and sisters, hear again that incredibly good news and be filled with his spirit. Your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Finding myself at a loss for words And the funny thing is, it's okay The last thing I need is to be heard But to hear what you would say
Our reading from God's Word today is Galatians chapter 5, beginning at verse 13. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. Do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. So, I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, grace and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Friends, we are wrapping up our series, The Other Side of the Isle, a series where we have purposefully and without reservation mixed the things of religion and politics. And as we've said each week, we we don't expect that everybody is going to agree with us. But we do hope, we do hope that we can all agree with Christ. And so if we think backwards, back to week one, we came back to the most important issue of the day. Namely, knowing Jesus and making him known. Uh, Pausing long enough to ask and to seek whether the person on the other side of the aisle, the person who thinks, acts, behaves, and votes differently than you do, whether or not they know the good news of Jesus, that beyond the issues and the platforms of parties is the question of eternities. And in order, in order to posture our hearts towards that question, we needed to turn down the noise and turn up Jesus. Now last week, Pastor Adam challenged us to ask better questions. It's probably uh, more accurate to say Jesus challenged us to ask better questions. And that was rooted in that beautiful parable of the Good Samaritan. So if you can remember back to last week, uh, the expert of the law asks this question, who is my neighbor? And Jesus says, no, no, a better question actually is what does it mean to be neighborly? So we're left with that question, what does it mean to be neighborly to those on the other side of the aisle? What does it mean to be neighborly to those who think, act, behave, and vote differently than you do? It simply means this, to be neighborly to those across the aisle means to act with care and compassion as one who has mercy, curious about what it is you hear. Uh, Let me rephrase it. It's acting with compassionate curiosity for the person on the other side of the aisle, especially with the person on the other side of the aisle. So where does that leave us today? Days, days before the election. It leaves me asking this question. How's your posture uh, just a few weeks ago, I was, I was at my surgeon's office for a follow-up appointment to my most recent surgery. And while there, I, I pretty much got reprimanded. Now, it was more like a backhanded reprimand, but it was a reprimand nevertheless. And it, it, it wasn't for my diet. It wasn't for my lack of use of pain medication. No, it was for my posture. Uh, that's right. I got reprimanded for my poor posture. The doctor said to me, Brian... You, 
you're walking around like a woman who just had a cesarean section. Stand up straight. Now, the funny thing is, I, I didn't even realize that my posture had changed, that I, was, that I was leaning over, that I had been bent out of shape. And I needed, interestingly, I needed the reprimand and the reminder to pay attention uh, to my posture. Now, mo most of us probably don't think about our posture very often, except now because I'm, I'm talking about posture. In fact, I, I imagine some of you are sitting up in the couch or the chair all of a sudden because you've, you've slipped down into it. And I get it. You're probably saying, Pastor, it's just that this chair, it's so slick, and I, I didn't know that it was happening. But, but now that you're saying it, Pastor, you know, I, I got it. I got it. So let's be honest. Posture, it, it matters. I mean, Instrumentalists and vocalists know this. They, they must maintain good posture so they can use the full capacity of their lungs and the power of their diaphragm. Uh, I can still hear Miss Betty, who was my vocal teacher at college, saying, you need to open up your chest. Now, Miss Betty was all of five foot one inch, but when she sang, she could be heard in Kansas. So I pretty much believed her. I mean, dancers, right? Dancers know that postures matter. It creates those, those lines of beauty, and it makes dancing look effortless. Office chair and desk manufacturers know that posture matters. They know that people who sit in front of a computer all day need posture reinforcement, like lumbar support, adjustable recline, movable arm positions. Or you could just get a standing desk where you can work on your posture. Posture, it matters. And friends, this is what St. Paul is talking about in Galatians today. Now, if you want to follow along with me, we're going to be in Galatians, kind of the whole of the book, primarily in Galatians chapter 5, that text we heard read just moments ago. Now, Galatians, Galatians was written by St. Paul with a very, very specific purpose, to argue against those who suggested that certainty could be found in rituals, in traditions, and in things other than Jesus. Here's how St. Paul would say it in chapter 1. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Or, if I took it from the message, I can't believe your fickleness how easily you've turned traitor to him who called you by the grace of Christ by embracing a variant message. Uh, Paul wants to be super clear, and so do I this morning. Our only certainty, our only certainty in all of the world is in Christ Jesus. The one who said, I am the way and the truth and the life. Our certainty rests in Christ. Now, to be real, Galatians could have been written for us today. And in a prophetic move of God's spirit, Paul does write to us today. However, his argument today uh, may be against those who find their certainty in political parties or systems. As if a political party will guard America from danger. As if a political party will keep evil at bay. As if a political party, and by extension their candidate, is going to save us from something. And interestingly, both sides of the aisle seem to share this rhetoric. Now, you know what? It's, it's really hard. I'm going to be honest. It's really hard to be a pastor on social media, which I guess is probably a sign that I should just get off of it. It's really hard because, you know, I'm friends with members of this church and other churches that I've served. And interestingly, I think members forget that their pastors are on social media. But if, if our social media is any indicator, then we have placed our certainty in the wrong place. It is clear from our posts on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook that we fear and love and trust things and people more than we do God. And this, sisters and brothers in Christ, is bad posture. 
You see, we've bowed our hearts to the gods of this world rather than the king of heaven, King Jesus. The scriptures call this idolatry. Now, I I know what some of you are saying. Pastor, social media feeds aren't real. Come on, Pastor, you, you know better, right? Well, friends, if that's true, then what we are projecting to the world is a lie. Living a lie for the world to see. Now we're not only idolaters, we're also liars. In fairness, I guess some will say, Pastor, social media feeds really are, are, you know, they're only 10% of who we really are. Then let me ask you this. Why don't I see the other 90% on social media? Shoot, let's, let's just get away from social media for a second. It isn't inherently bad after all. It, it has been providing sermon illustrations since 2004. But ask the hard question. Has your trust... And the hope of keeping this nation, and by extension you, from whatever, has it fallen into the lap of somebody or something other than Jesus? Have our fears of economies and affordable health care and borders and racial violence driven us to hope in humans elected to office? I mean, how many times have we thought, well, if, if Biden gets elected, then everything will be okay. Or if Trump gets reelected, then everything will be okay. How long are we going to find our certainty in someone or something other than God? Like that day in my surgeon's office, we, we probably don't even realize that we're doing it and that the posture of our heart has changed. And like that day in my surgeon's office, you and I need the reprimand and the reminder of God's word to reposture our hearts. We need to hear the psalm writer say, do not put your trust in princes or in human beings who cannot save. When their spirit departs this earth, they will return to the ground. And on that day, all of their plans will come to nothing. But blessed are those whose help and hope is in the Lord their God. You see, posture, it matters. It mattered for Jesus. If we do a quick scan through the Gospels, we'll see Jesus' posture of compassion, suffering with those in society who are forgotten and disregarded, who are considered not important, at least not important as everybody else. We see Jesus' posture of healing and wholeness, freeing people from demons that held them captive and diseases that threatened to overrun the body. Jesus' posture of a servant as he removes outer garments to wash the grimy and calloused feet of his disciples. And when we slow down long enough, we'll see through it all an unwavering trust in his Father above and before all things. Matthew, Mark, and Luke all capture Jesus' temptation in the desert. There in the wilderness, having fasted for 40 days, Jesus is tested. Will his trust in the Father's plan waver? Will he call upon his own divine power, or will he submit to his father's plan, trusting that his father knows best? And it's in the third temptation where Jesus' postured heart is so clear. Jesus says this, again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms and the world and all of their glory. And he said to Jesus, all of these I will give to you if you will fall down and worship me. If your posture will change from the Father to me, then I will give you all of this. And Jesus says to him, be gone, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. In other words, God and God alone is my certainty. Him only will I worship. Him only will I trust Above all things, Jesus' heart postured in full trust of his Father's plan. 
Of course, Jesus would be tested again, this time on a hill outside the city, the place where the, where the disregarded and the forgotten are left to die as the public passes by and hurls their mockery. There, as, as Jesus bleeds out for the sins of humanity, a passerby yells, you who said you could, who could destroy the temple in three days, come down, go ahead, Messiah, save yourself. Again, would Jesus draw on his divinity to come down off of the cross? He could, after all, come down and smite that passerby. Or, or would he trust above all things his father and his father's plan? See, posture matters. Jesus, with his arms extended, prays, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, they've, they've misplaced their certainty. They've slowly shifted their trust and allegiance to the things of the world. Father, forgive them. Jesus' trust never wavers. Even to his last breath as he says, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Even with his last breath, Jesus' posture is one of trust, surrendering to the Father's plan, even death, so that you and I, sinners though we are, might become the righteousness of God. As St. Paul says, for our sake, the Father made Jesus to be sin because he knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. In other words, in Christ's death, we possess the fruit of his life. We are fruit full. As Paul says in Galatians 2, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. With Jesus living in us, we are fruit full, experiencing his love for us his joy over us, his peace with us, his patience for us, his kindness to us, his goodness toward us, his gentleness with us, and his self-control guiding us. We are full of the fruit of his life. And if, friends, we are full of the fruit of his life, then we are to be fruitful as ones whose posture has been changed, whose trust and hope above all things is in the Father, whose certainty is rooted in Christ. When we have that joy and that love and that peace and that patience and that kindness and that goodness and that gentleness and that self-control, friends, when we have that in us, when we are full of that, And we are called as representatives of Christ's kingdom to be fruitful, to extend that same love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness and self-control. We are days before an election. And I wonder how many of us are heading into that election full of the fruit of Christ. I wonder how many of us are heading in to that election fruitful, spreading the, the love and the joy and the peace and showing patience and kindness and gentleness and self-control. How many of us are living in that fruit? How many of us need to continue to turn down the noise and turn up Jesus? Friends, in these days of so much anxiety, so much rage, so much selfish ambition, so many dissensions and factions and envy, in these days we need to live, as Paul says in Galatians 5, in the freedom of the Spirit. It is for freedom that we've been set free. So in that freedom to live with the love of Christ, the joy of Christ, and the peace of Christ, and the patience of Christ, and the faithfulness, and the goodness, and the gentleness of Christ, and the self-control of Christ. Because we have been crucified with him and raised to new life. 
I wonder, sisters and brothers, if you and I could step in to the voting booth on Tuesday with joy, with peace, with patience and love and self-control, if we could interact with people in a line, with uh, voting workers, if we could be gentle and kind and make them wonder where could that possibly come from and then point them to Christ. May God enable us to live this fruitful life now and always. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all of our human understanding, guard and keep our hearts in Christ today and every day. Amen. Let's join in prayer together. Father in heaven, giver of the spirit of all the fruits that you fill us with, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, Lord, thank you for representing yourself to the world through us. We are honored, humbled that you would do this. Father, help us to do it with joy and find joy in, in doing uh, your work. Father, we praise you for life and health and for another day to enjoy your provision. Help us to notice the abundance that we receive, both physically and spiritually. Help us to keep our eyes on all that you have given as we come to you with our requests. You have been faithful, so we ask that you continue in that faithfulness with all who are sick and mourning. Lord, be with all those people that are fighting COVID, uh, particularly Darren. Lord, we also lift to you uh, those that are uh, in need of healing, like uh, Les and Molly. Lord, also be with those who are near death, like Dianelle. Lord, we entrust to you all those that have these needs. And, and Lord, you also tell us to love one another as you have loved us. So Lord, we thank you today for those who live that love in the role of medical caregivers. Lord, you know who they are. Uh, everything from nurses to doctors to all who are on the front lines to the, the EMTs, uh, all the people that have some place, those who are, are cleaning the rooms and restocking the spaces and uh, meeting people at the front doors and keeping people safe. All those that are a part of it, Lord, be with them. Help them to love well. Oh, powerful God, we so often call on you and notice the things of this world. But our chief desire and the greatest gift that you give is not this world, but the world that's still to come, life eternal with you forever. And Lord, we are challenged in this world by so many things. But many of them come back to the love of money and the struggle with contentment and the pursuit of comfort in this world. Help us always keep one eye on the present and one on the eternity that Jesus has opened to all people. Help us find joy in using the resources we have, the money that you give us, to bring even more people with us to enjoy what will come in that life to come. Gracious Father, in the beginning, you, Father and Son and Holy Spirit, together you spoke life into existence. Your word has always delivered your power to the benefit of your creation. Thank you for bringing your word through many pastors and churches in many places. We pray today that it would continue to break powerfully into our world in Grand Rapids through the members of Emmanuel Lutheran Church and also through Pastor Craig and Pastor Tyler and newly added staff member Pastor Mark and uh, Adam Peitch, the new worship director there. Lord, thank you. We pray that you would help them to trust your word, that it never will return void, and that you always accomplish your will for it. Help them use it faithfully. And finally, Father, we ask the same blessing on those who faithfully serve the families of Holy Cross. Lord, bless the parents and the caregivers that use the family faith kits and the confirmation resources. Lord, bless the people that uh, pull up the discussion questions from Sunday morning and talk about the message that they've heard. 
Father, we pray that those who are asked the questions would be receptive. Lord, that your spirit would guide their conversations. Lord, the discipling happens in our own homes, parent to child and child to parent. Give confidence that you and your word are what make it effective so they can trust that you'll take care of what you need to do. Father, help us all grow in praying to you and in trusting you as we do this faithful and loving work in our own homes. Now, Lord, for those loved ones about whom we care, those situations over which we have no control and those special burdens we carry upon our hearts, Lord, we lay all of these things before you using the pattern that Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now let's sing about that one foundation that we have that gives us confidence for whatever comes. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. May you be filled with the fruit of God's spirits today and in the week to come. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.